this lecture, we're going to talk about microbial metabolism, and that's generation or production of energy as well as utilization of energy in both the prokaryotic cells and the eukaryotic cells. So organisms and carbon, uh, it depends, as we discussed earlier, on whether or not the organism can utilize directly uh, carbon dioxide or if organisms rely on the production from, of carbon from other organisms. So the autotrophs are the organisms that uh, engage in photosynthesis and they use carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as their source of carbon and they're, at, they're able to produce uh, glucose from the atmospheric carbon in the presence of sunlight. So most autotrophs are uh, photosynthetic and they actually obtain their energy from the sun. Now the heterotrophs, on the other hand, those are the organisms that rely on the production of glucose from, or the production of carbon for that matter, from other organisms. That is, they cannot use atmospheric carbon dioxide. They must obtain their carbon from the environment, mostly in the form of complex uh, organic molecules called glucose. Those are the simple uh, form of carbohydrate. And they must, so they're, by definition, they subsist on the products of other organisms. So carbon, hydrogen, uh, oxygen, and water are constantly cycled between the heterotropic and the autotrophic uh, worlds. And in this slide, you can see that basically both are dependent on one another. So the autotrophs cannot produce glucose unless they have carbon dioxide that uh, is expired or during respiration, we all exhale carbon dioxide and that is what is used by the autotrophs to produce oxygen and glucose. So for instance, with the global warming crisis, one of the drivers of the possibility that we are undergoing global warming is the uh, cutting down of all these forests. So when we remove the capacity to produce oxygen, of course, then that's uh, a serious problem. And uh, the plants also, they're dependent on the carbon dioxide that's produced by the heterotrophs. And we certainly have an overabundance of carbon dioxide because the cars produce carbon dioxide as well. So metabolism, now just so that we get our terms understood, metabolism is, is the sum of all chemical transformations that occur in a cell or in an organism. And that these chemical reactions are all, if not, or most, if not all, driven by a series of enzyme catalyzed reaction and that these reactions constitute uh, the metabolic pathway. Now, catabolism is the degradation or the breakdown of metabolism where organic nutrient molecules are converted into smaller and simpler end products. And the process of catabolism releases energy. Uh, the term Anabolism is the opposite of catabolism, and that's synthesis. So that's actually taking small molecules and building them up into larger, more complex ones. And as we have been learning throughout the lectures, the three biomolecular uh, groups of molecules, the lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates, all start out in simpler forms and then go through anabolism where energy is required for these simpler molecules to become more complex. So cellular respiration is defined as the production of ATP 
and ATP is utilized in terms of producing energy. So when ATP, first of all, when ATP uh, is broken down into ADP, we get energy. So in order to produce ATP from ADP, it requires energy. So we're constantly cycling back and forth between these two forms of energy molecules. And when they're broken down, energy is released. And when they're built up, when that extra phosphate is added to ADP, then that requires energy. So aerobic respiration is uh, occurs in bacteria that live in environments with oxygen. So they live in oxygenated environments. And in order for this energy production to occur, oxygen is required. And the reason for that is at the end of the reaction, oxygen is the electron acceptor. Now, anaerobic respiration uh, occurs in bacteria that live in environments without oxygen. And in fact, oxygen will uh, kill or eradicate these anaerobic bacteria. So the final electron acceptor for those uh, bacteria is an inorganic, not uh, a molecule that is not uh, oxygen. So glucose is the most important uh, energy carbohydrate uh, molecule. I call it a currency molecule. It's the molecule that's exchanged between plants and animals. It's the molecule that flows in our bloodstream and provides uh, energy to all of our cells. And uh, it, it is the uh, molecule, as I explained, that is also the building block molecule in plants. So glucose has three major outcomes. It can be stored. It can be, glucose can be oxidized. Now oxidized is another word for being broken down. And uh, it can be oxidized or broken down into pyruvate. And that process is called glycolysis. We'll have a little more in-depth discussion about that. And ultimately, glucose will be turned into ATP uh, and then other metabolic intermediates. Glucose can be oxidized by the pentose phosphate pathway. Now you're wondering, what is that? Well, actually, that's the pathway that produces the uh, uh, nucleic acids. Now, during our discussion about the uh, DNA and RNA, the backbone of the DNA molecule, remember DNA has like a ladder, so the backbone of that molecule are all ribose, which are sugar molecules. And in order to produce those uh, molecules, we need to go through this pentose phosphate pathway. So basically, this is a synthesis of what I just said, which is glucose can get stored. And in animals, it's stored in the form of glycogen. And in plants, it's stored in the form of starch. OK, now glucose can also go down and be oxidized or broken down. Uh, into pyruvate, or glucose can be oxidized via the pentose phosphate pathway. Now, it's important to get a clear sense about terminology. So remember, we talked about catabolism earlier. So catabolism is just another word for oxidation. OK, and anabolism is another word for synthesis, which is another word for being broken down or for being built up. So I like to make sure that students understand that these terms can are basically mean very similar things. And sometimes it, one can get 
confused by it all and and the intention isn't to do that it's just the way in which terms are used now the other that reminds me the other word for anabolism is uh, reduction and that's used in a more chemical sense so reduction is actually the opposite of uh, oxidation okay so also the uh, glucose pathway can further go into uh, glycolysis and uh, the citric acid cycle. So here um, there are three uh, directions, so to speak, that glucose can go through in terms of being broken down. So glucose can uh, be fermented uh, into ethanol and yeast. It can actually undergo anaerobic respiration over here or glucose can undergo aerobic respiration. Now the aerobic pathway is the more common one and this pathway generally produces much more ATP than the anaerobic pathway. And the reason for this is very complex biochemically and we'll review that uh, in another lecture. But basically pyruvate goes through the uh, glycolysis or glucose goes through glycolysis to pyruvate, which then goes through the citric acid cycle and then uh, oxidative phosphorylation until we get to uh, our ultimate end product, which again is member CO2 and water. So aerobic metabolism, to really review these two uh, more specifically, uh, occurs in three stages. There's glycolysis, which is glucose going to pyruvate. There's a uh, citric acid cycle where we get formation of acetyl coenzyme A. And then the final stage is oxidative phosphorylation. So in summary, this is what we have. We have glucose plus oxygen being produced to yield carbon dioxide and water. Now here's another picture in more detail of aerobic metabolism. So you'll see again that we go through this process called glycolysis and we produce pyruvate. Then pyruvate gets turned into acetyl coenzyme A and the acetyl coenzyme A travels through the citric acid cycle which then ultimately uh, yields or comes to this oxidative phosphorylation stage. Uh, some people call it the respiratory uh, electron transport uh, chain. And this is the part where uh, ATP is produced. Now everything below this place here, this process all occurs in the mitochondria. Whereas the uh, gly glycolysis process occurs in the cytoplasm. And as I said before, this process is a lot more uh, direct uh, and produces a much larger amount of ATP. So it's a much more efficient way to produce energy. Now, this is a picture of respiration and fermentation in terms of bacteria and yeast. So remember, yeast uh, can produce energy through fermentation. And through fermentation, we uh, get uh, these other types of products where pyruvate uh, is, or pyruvic acid uh, is carried by NADH, which is an electron uh, transporter from glycolysis into fermentation end products and uh, that that is different from respiration which uh, occurs in the presence of oxygen and here we get uh, the various processes where we end up with the electron transport chain which as you can see right here requires oxygen to produce uh, water. So this is actually at the very end stage and here is our production of ATP.
Now, in terms of thinking about carbohydrate catabolism, in terms of the different uh, eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, that glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of both types of cells. The intermediate acetyl coenzyme A step occurs in the cytoplasm of both uh, cells. The Krebs or citric acid cycle, as some other people call it, the Krebs cycle uh, or citric acid cycle occurs in the mitochondria of eukaryotic cells, but occurs in the cytopl cytoplasm of prokaryotes. And this is a short uh, abbreviation for the electron transport chain. That occurs in the mitochondrial inner membrane, but occurs in the plasma membrane of the uh, prokaryotic cells. So anaerobic metabolism, on the other hand, remembers, remember, does not require oxygen. And the byproduct of lactic, uh, of anaerobic metabolism is lactic acid. Now in humans, that lactic acid can actually be recycled back by the liver. But in terms of the bacteria, they just produce lactic acid and they go through their various types of conversions. But remember, they don't have a liver, okay? So they can't undergo the same kind of process, but certainly they can exist in an anaerobic environment. And you know, the truth is humans for a very short time can also undergo movement and energy production and utilization also without oxygen, but we don't last very long. Uh, the example there is sprinters uh, essentially mostly rely on anaerobic metabolism, but they can only undergo anaerobic metabolism for a very short time. So here are the different types of, or the different ways in which ATP can be produced. So we can produce uh, ATP through photosynthesis or photosynthetic pigments in combination with light. We can start with glucose over here. We generate ATP. And depending on the type of metabolism uh, that occurs, we can uh, have the electron carriers at the end, or NADP, or NAD, or FAD. And then we end up with oxygen, uh, or we require uh, oxygen in terms of that final electron acceptor for aerobic respiration. We can exist on other molecules for anaerobic or fermentation. We have an organic compound. So our first example, uh, which cellular respiration pathway is the most efficient at producing ATP? Is it aerobic, anaerobic, or fermentation? Well, the answer is, as we talked about throughout uh, the discussion today, the answer is aerobic. But we can certainly produce ATP by these other pathways. We just don't get as much of it. What kinds of human tissue do you think anaerobic bacteria live in? So to answer this question, you really need to think about what parts of the human body are not exposed to oxygen. Well, how about an example, great example there is the human bladder. So we have bacteria. So for instance, if we have a urinary tract infection, uh, that bacteria is often anaerobic. If you can imagine bacteria living in a uh, human bladder, uh, that bacteria is not going to get exposed to uh, oxygen at all, really. But what about aerobic bacteria? Well, that one isn't as challenging to think about. Number one, what is the tissue exposed to oxygen? Number one is the respiratory tract. Well, guess what? Pneumonia, I think, what do you think? I think pneumonia is an aerobic bacteria. So sometimes with these questions, you may not remember uh, 
the exact bacteria, whether it's anaerobic or aerobic, but you can think about what tissue does it infect and what tissue does it live in, and lo and behold, maybe you can take a very educated guess. So the third example has to do with where does the electron transport chain occur in the eukaryotic cell? Well, the eukaryotic cell is very lucky because it has this wonderful organelle called the mitochondria. Now, remember, we've talked about the mitochondria several times in these lectures. And not only does the mitochondria have this wonderful outer membrane, but it also has an inner uh, compartments or compartments, and there is an inner space. And actually, that last stage is occurring on the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, unfortunately, the prokaryotic cell is not that lucky, and that cell has to have that same function go on in the plasma membrane. So here in the uh, prokaryotic cell, the actual uh, last stage, that oxidative phosphorylation electron transport occurs in the inner lining of the plasma membrane. So that concludes our discussion about microbial metabolism. Thank you very much for visiting educator.com.